Hi, I'm live from Dragon Z Name. Welcome back to the Forgotten City. Now, in the last episode, we went through the palace, we found Navia, nothing much came of that. But we did help uh, Rufius with the willow bark. We got the Roman plaque. That's super cool. I want to try and find Galerius if I can. Because I really want to make him magistrate. But I also want to get to Meliolus. So I guess I know where Meliolus is. So I'm doing that first. Claudia? Oh yeah, this is now not damaged for the first time. <laughs> Claudia, I really need like that love letter. Hi. Let's do this. Try this again. I'm not surprised. Yes, talk. talk. Uh, mm. Get back at Meliolus. Mm. Just a hunch. No, not now. I could, I'll, but we women have to stick together. I will try this. I'm not sure it will work. I couldn't agree more. One hand washes the other, as they say. Exactly. It seems our interests are aligned. I imagine knowing his true identity will give me the leverage I need to manage him appropriately. But first, I need you to do something for me. Okay, what do you want? I want you to bring me some wine. Uh, Just that's fine. One small urn should do it. I have oh, to. Don't look at me like that. I know this must be hard for you to wrap your sweet little pleb head around. <laughs> so what do you need me to spell out? Why do you want wine? Let me tell you something about Maliolus. He talks a lot about freedom, but what he doesn't tell you is that he means freedom for men. After all, yeah, I've mean... done for him, counselling him through his entire election campaign, and he had the audacity to lock me in here. He said it was for my own good, and that my drinking was unbecoming of a lady, let alone the wife of a magistrate. I'll show him unbecoming. Tonight, <laughs> at his victory party, I'm going to get good and merry, and if he tries to discipline me again, I'll threaten to expose his true identity in front of everyone. I am so looking forward to it. She's a real peach. So you'll help me? Sure, here's wine. Thank you. Here's the letter. Thanks. Quinctius to beloved Claudia, for a time I despaired at the thought of being trapped here for the rest of my life, but then I met you and discovered that as long as I am with you, I am exactly where I should be. Mere words cannot express my affection for you, and so I will perform a grand gesture in your honor. I will become this city's magistrate so that I may govern with wisdom and strength, with you by my side. Now, perhaps you can tell me who Quinctius really is. According to this bounty letter from Emperor Nero, he's the person who started the fires in Rome last year. What? He's... Oh no. That's... Um... <laughs> quite a lot more serious than I imagined. Yeah? I only <laughs> wanted some leverage over him, not to destroy him. Well... Give me that immediately. Nobody else must know. No. No, I'll think I'll hang on to it. Sure, you can have this one. I can always get another copy. Can I? No, I'll what? hang on to it. No. You... you tricked me, you mendacious little Sturkus. I didn't lie to you. It was a lie of a mission. You were planning this all along and you deliberately concealed it. May Jupiter cut you down. Yeah, yeah, I'll be going now. I curse you. I curse your life and mind and memory. May you be unable to walk or eat or drink. May this drag you to the depths. Sure. This is outrageous. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm totally okay with this. So... I'm just gonna wait around in your pool for a second. I kinda wanna find Galerius first and make him magistrate. Before I... Expose Quinctius. Oh, wait. There was like a thing here. Eh? Mm. 
do 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 oh there's just a chest here fine okay that's a lot of money though not super useful but oh what's this Opius loves Scintilla, corrected to Opius killed Scintilla. Okay, so who knew that? Then. Opius loves Scintilla, Opius killed Scintilla. Huh. That's very interesting. Galerius, where are you? There you are. Hey, do you want to be magistrate? Sorry again, friend. I went and did as you asked, and it worked. Cool, right? How is it possible that you've just arrived here and you already know everyone and exactly what's about to happen to them? I'm reliving the same day over and over again. Uh, you're toying with me, right? No. Wait, you're not kidding, are you? No. That's... The only way you could have known. Yep. You're a bit like... Oh, what was his name? Sisyphus. Yeah, that's the one. Old King Sisyphus. Like Sifi... Sif... Bleh. <laughs> like Sisyphus or so? Sisyphus was a Greek king a long time ago. For daring to think he could outsmart the gods, he was given a terrible punishment. He was forced to push a great boulder up to the top of a hill. Only, just as it reached the top, it would roll all the way back down to the bottom. Forcing him to start over and over and over again for all eternity, just like you. Thanks. Actually, that's that I think so about encouraging. It, a bunch of old stories about the gods punishing people by making them do the same futile task over and over. Yeah. Tantalus was made to grasp at fruit on a tree he could never quite reach. The Bellides had to keep fetching water in a sieve. Oh, and Ixion was strapped to a wheel going round and round forever. But on the bright side. At least you're not stuck in the underworld like they all were. We've seen, we've seen all of them. We saw the dude reaching for the fruit. We saw the dude on the wheel. We saw the lady with the sieve by the f by the fountain, and we found Sisyphus. So, did Pluto trap the gods here? No, those those were the people. He just said he punished people. So those were all the the, the Greek people that he that, that were punished by them. Or or Roman people, whatever. So we are where they are. Anyway, I don't know which god you managed to upset to get yourself into this position, friend, but you seem alright to me. So I'll tell you what. I'll keep doing whatever I can to help you. Thanks. You just focus on finding a way to break the cycle you're in. Thanks, Galerius. You're a good man. You are awesome, actually. I really like you. Um, you and Georges, you are the best. That's also a tie into the Livia poem that we found way back. Oh my god! Oh, that's kind of you to say. Now, I'm going to keep your secret. Although, it's not as if I'll remember this next time we talk anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Kinda. And if our conversations ever start to annoy you, just tell me you're busy. <laughs> I know when I'm not wanted. May fortune Aww. smile on you, friend. I, I, no, I still want to talk to you. I saw you slide down that rope before. Yeah. Very impressive. And strange too, since that device you use <laughs> is exactly the same as one I've been working on for weeks. Yeah, I got oh, it from of you. Of course. It's because I already gave it to you in a previous time loop, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry to ask, but. Is there any chance you'd be willing to do me a favor? Sure, what do you need? Well, I've been trying to get this rare flower from the rock spire in the middle of the lake. It's too steep to climb, so I hung a rope over the lake and made this pulley device, only I uh, couldn't quite summon the nerve to use it. Do you think you could use the device again and try to get that flower for me? Definitely. Yeah, why do you need it? <laughs> I, uh, I don't really feel comfortable talking about it. It's for a lady, right? Come on, tell me, do you have a little crush on someone? Look, I'll tell you everything if you get it for me, all right? Everything for you, Galerius. Oh, thank you. It would help me a lot. There's no rush, just whenever you get a chance. I get right on All right, it. see you around. Because I really like you and I just want to do things for you, Galerius, because you help me. 
He's such a nice dude. I know I have much more important things to do, but I don't care. Galerius is a deer, so we'll help him in his quest for love. No, oh god. Nope, that did not work. Uh, hmm. Okay, let's try that again. I need to jump rather early, I think. Ha! Oh, come on! Really? That was just mean. I just need to be ready to spam E. Yeah, that was f too far. Yeah, it's... I know, thanks. Uh, so, even much earlier. Ugh. Ah, yes, nice! I made it! I made it! Delirious, I got the flower. I did it. Don't you just love springtime? I do love springtime. Salve again, my Sisyphean friend. <laughs> now, what's on your mind? I got your flower. Brilliant! You did it! Well done! This is going to make her so happy. Equitia, I mean, Ooh. now I just have to figure out how to give it to her. What I really want to do is walk up to her, give her the flower, and confess I've been madly in love with her since the moment we met. But on the other hand, I can't shake the feeling that the consequences could be... terrible. Why would they be terrible? What's the worst that could happen? You mean, aside from her execution? You see, <laughs> Equitia is a Vestal Priestess, meaning she's taken a vow of chastity. The breaking of which would be an extremely serious affront to the gods and a capital offense. Even if she was just suspected of being unchaste, it could lead to her execution. Unchaste Vestals get buried alive. Oh, and I'd get flogged to death for good measure. But at the same time, she's just so kind and graceful. And I feel so much love for her that if I don't tell her, it'll burn a hole in my chest. I don't know what to do. What do you think? What would you do? Become magistrate <laughs> and then just give it to her. I think you should tell her how you feel. Consequences be damned. I think you can admire her discreetly from afar. If you really love her, you need to get over her. Oh, hi, Olpius. I'm no relationship counselor. Figure it out on your own. Um, yeah, I mean. Hmm. <laughs> now that I hear you just say that go for it. I hear how crazy once. It is. I think maybe I need to be a bit more cautious. Nice. What I need is a go-between. Someone who can tell her how I feel and find out how she feels without risking her life. What do you say? Do you think you could help me one more time? Sure, I will. Wonderful! Now, all I need you to do is give her the flower and tell her it's from a secret admirer. Tell her I'll keep my distance and that I just want her to know that she's loved. Aw, that's sweet. Thank you. Come back as quick as you can, and tell me what she says. About the magistrate thing, though. Salvig, no. Um... I ever thought about running for magistrate? I've bounced the idea around, but... Uh, maybe... If Meliolus runs, he's going to break the golden rule and kill us all. And how could you... Oh, wait. You've <laughs> seen it in another time loop, haven't you? Yep. Well, in that case, we need to find a way to make sure Maliolus loses. Better yet, get him to withdraw altogether. I can. If you can do that, and Sentius is the only candidate left, I'll run against him. Deal? Yes, deal. Okay. All right, friend. Hope you find a way to break that cycle you're in. Thanks. I hate that I have to do all of this again. <laughs> but sure. Equitia. Here, I have a flower for you. A new face. Are oh, they? and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Um, can I ask you some questions about escaping the underworld? Someone wanted me to give you this flower. Oh, how lovely. It just happens to be my favorite, too. Of course. Who do I have to thank for this? I'm supposed to tell you it's from secret admirer and that they'll keep their distance. They just want you to know you're loved. I see. So <laughs> it's from Galerius then. <laughs> you know already. <laughs> of course I do. I think everyone in the city knows. <laughs> that man is a wonderful human being and my favorite person in the world. But he is the least subtle secret admirer you could imagine. 
the way he looks at me with those puppy dog eyes. Oh, Plus, hilarious. he's been trying for weeks to get his hands on this flower. He went to so much effort, too. Suspending that rope above the lake, inventing that pulley device all on his own. He'd just stand there each morning, looking at the flower, trying to summon the courage to seize it. Oh, my heart. Aww. So what shall I, should I tell him? Tell that adorable oaf that my Vestal's vow of chastity ends once I turn 36. So if we ever make it out of here, and he doesn't mind waiting a few years, then tell him I love him too. Okay, I will. I hope so. <laughs> See you again soon, I hope. Oh my god. That is amazing. Okay, Belliolus, I have bad news for you. You're gonna withdraw from the election. Demetrius doesn't usually let anyone in. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I want you to withdraw. <laughs> Are you insane? You... Why would I... Because I know you're Quinctius, your wife gave me a love letter, and Nero wants you dead. I... Uh, so... It finally caught up with me. It did, indeed. I suppose that makes you... What? One of Nero's assassins? Nope. No, I am not, fortunately for you. So... You're not going to kill me? Not if you withdraw from the election immediately and release everyone in debt bondage to you. Oh, so I don't have to give uh, give Opius the 2000 anymore. Oh, so much work and money. <laughs> oh, well, if I do it, do you let me live? Yes, indeed. <laughs> you just Fine. Brain damage. This cesspit of a city would have been beneath me anyway. I'll have Demetrius notify the priestess of my withdrawal and release those two from debt bondage. Awesome. There, you got what you wanted. Now, please, leave my villa and never speak to me again. Great, 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 great. Galerius. <laughs> two things. Salve again, my Sisyphean friend. Yes. Oh. I delivered that flower to Equitia Aqu for you. Thanks. What did she say? She knew it was from you. She asked me to tell you that once you turn 36, she's allowed to marry and that she loves you too. Venus, that is the best news I've ever heard in my life. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You have no idea how happy you've made me. I think I, I do. <laughs> something I could do to thank you properly, but I don't have much to offer you. Run for magistrate. All I can do is tell you where there's a secret stash of coins you might be interested in. Sure. Uh, don't worry about it. Yeah, I don't need Thank anything, you, actually. But I'd feel bad if I didn't tell you anyway. In the rock tunnel, near the stairs, there's a little doorway set into the rock. Inside, if you look carefully, you can see a chest. Unfortunately, one of those golden huntress statues is... I know the already, so I'm thanks. Game to move it. If you can figure out how to get past it, I reckon there might be a small fortune waiting for you. I hope that helps in some way. It did. I already got that, but sure. Uh, election? Uh, I, even I... Yes, I want I want you to run. Can I not do that now? Oh. Well, but... oh. Huh. All right, friend. Okay, so I can't m I need to do that next time, I guess. I still have the letter from Claudia. May I have the key to the upper cistern? I think it's best if I hang on to it. Why? You mean to ask, why am I unwilling to trust a newly arrived non-citizen with access to our water supply, the lifeblood of this city? Send Tillas in there, I know it. The question. I guess I'll have to find another way in. I think you're hiding something. Yes, our water supply. <laughs> from you. I wasn't born yesterday. Poisoning a city's water supply is the oldest trick in the Codex. Quite literally. Aeneas the Tactician wrote a siegecraft manual for military commanders some 300 years ago, recommending the poisoning or pollution of cisterns. And I'm beginning to wonder if the culprit we're looking for might, after all this, be you. Perhaps it was a mistake on my part to place so much trust in you. Yeah, he's hiding something. Okay, fine, I'll let it go. I'm glad to hear that. Now, uh, was there something else? 
All right, what I want to do now, I guess, is go to the Greek guy again. Hey, hey, I know it's Pluto. Ah, welcome, welcome. I'm Lyle. It's a sincere, tell me. I'm looking for a plaque that, plaque that was removed from the obelisk. Ah, yes, that cursed thing. I know exactly where it is. I will tell you everything I know, but first, a request. I have been living down here alone for many years, with nobody to talk to but myself. The one thing I long for above all else, let us find out. Yes, Pluto, god of the underworld. Excellent. I see you are indeed quite astute. Very few come to that realization before their time in the sun is over. Now, will you join me in a friendly Socratic dialogue? Of course. Sure. Wonderful. Then let me begin with a question. Uh-oh. Would you say you know the difference between right and wrong? I'm not sure. It's a complex question. It is. You are an overthinker, too. <laughs> We're the same, then. It is probably why I became a philosopher. But if you struggle with right and wrong normally, then down here with the golden rule, surely your struggle can only have become more difficult. Yes. Well, that's reassuring. And the truth is, you're not alone. <laughs> you see, out there in the world, being uncertain about right and wrong was acceptable because our mistakes rarely had consequences. So we would tell lies and bend rules and turn a blind eye and rationalize and yet still find a way to think of ourselves as good people. That's too but deep. But under the golden rule, morality matters. The slightest wrongdoing could result in a mass execution. So to navigate this maze, we would have to be certain about the difference between right and wrong. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, and that's the problem. Whose vision of right and wrong? That is an excellent question. And it leads directly to my next line of inquiry. So let me ask you this. Is there one system of morality which is always perfectly correct? No. Which you could follow in every situation and always do the right thing? I don't think so. Are you sure? Or is it possible that humans simply haven't figured out the right system yet? Sure, that's possible. I suppose we just haven't figured it out yet. I think there's no such thing as a correct morality. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. So is it up to each of us to decide what right and wrong mean to us individually? Ah! Or must we simply follow the laws and customs of whichever community we're in? I think it's the latter, actually. I think we need to decide for ourselves. I think we need to follow the laws and the customs of our community. Ah! You know, I think you'd find an ally in Herodotus, a scribe from among my people who lived some 400 years ago. He told the story of a man named Darius, whose curiosity was piqued when he learned that a certain tribe had the practice of eating their dead. He asked some Greeks who burnt their dead, what would it take for you to eat your dead? Aghast, they replied, nothing. Then he asked the tribe who ate their dead, what would it take for you to burn your dead? Nothing, they replied, equally aghast. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. it is concluded that custom is king, that right and wrong are merely local ideas which do not survive the journey from one tribe to another. I take it you're in agreement? Yes, actually. Then let me ask you this. If you visited a tribe where they ate each other, copulated with the dead and drank wine from cups made out of human skulls, would you still maintain that within such a tribe there is nothing wrong with such conduct? No, I suppose not, but that's because I grew up differently. And that's a credit to you. It is the mark of a civilized person to change their position when presented with a superior argument. <laughs> okay. My point is this. I don't think anyone alive truly knows any hard and fast rules about right and wrong. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm s what I said, right? I'm not sure about that. What about do not kill? I mean, you always 
make an exception for that whenever there's a war going on, right? For the do not kill rule. Because in war, that's okay to, to kill a soldier from the other side. If there is one thing I have observed about rules, it is that virtuous people do not need them, and evil people will always find a way around them. <laughs> well, I don't and know if so I agree with that either. Our limitations, and the sad truth that no human society will ever achieve the utopia for which it strives. That is definitely true. In mathematics, we would call it an asymptote, a line that can be approached but never reached. Because the only way to create a utopia is with the ever-present threat of force, such as the golden rule. And even then it this doesn't work. And no other is the root from which a tyrant springs when he first appears as a protector. That's and very life true. Under tyranny is no utopia at all. Yep. <laughs> I agree. I'm glad to hear that. In any case, thank you for humoring an old man. I would be happy to answer your questions. Well, the plague. Where can I find Kabash? Why would he know that? I will tell you, but you may find him hostile. To prepare for your encounter, there are certain things you must know. Very few know this, but before the Romans came to this city, it was once entirely Greek. Yes. The architecture, the temples, and the people. When the Romans came, in typical fashion, they claimed it as their own built over everything that could be built over and renamed the things that could not. <laughs> yeah, Thus that's the very Roman. Thus the shrine of Persephone became the shrine of Proserpina. And when they found an obelisk bearing the name Hades, they tore it off and replaced it with Pluto instead. And the city's dwindling Greek residents, witnessing this compulsive Roman conquest, decided to preserve what they could of their heritage. They gathered their art and valuables, secreted them away through the Temple of Demeter, and hid them here, out of reach of the Romans. Hmm. What does this have to do with Kabash? I'm with you so far. However, there was one thing that always seemed out of place to me, and it is the very thing you the see. The obelisk. An even older plaque bearing an Egyptian inscription. How... what did that say? We had no idea until years later, when the first of my friends began to die. As a result of their deaths, we began to dig catacombs branching off from this cavern to lay them to rest. We extended the tunnel so far that we accidentally discovered another, an even older tunnel, which somebody had gone to great lengths to keep hidden. Suddenly it made sense why there was an out-of-place Egyptian plaque among our people's possessions. You see, we proud Greeks had thought the Romans beasts for stealing and corrupting our heritage. And we did the but same. But it turns out this game has been going on much longer than any of us imagined. <laughs> I think it is best you head through the catacombs and follow Kabash's trail. Okay, can I have the key? What's in there? There are certain things you must see for yourself. Take this key. You'll need it to open the gate. Thank you. Okay, what's your story then? You mean, how did I end up living alone in this cave with yes. nothing but these relics of the past for company? It's a long story. I have listened to all the long stories, so go on. I was a quarrelsome young man. At 19, I left Corinth for Rome to study rhetoric at one of her finest academies, so I could argue more forcefully. Back then, I used to enjoy verbally sparring with everyone I could, and I was good. One night I found myself in a tavern, in an argument with a drunk mercenary. It became heated, he drew a gladius, and I won the argument, but <laughs> lost my life. I woke up on the banks of the Styx at a campfire opposite Karen. Of course, I tried to persuade her to let me return, but even with all my skill, I failed. I settled in, made friends, and learned what I could, quickly realizing our little community faced certain death under the Golden Rule. So I began looking for a place to hide underground. Fortunately, I found this place waiting for me. You see, I was not the first to take refuge here. I returned to my friends above, 
persuaded them to join me, and twelve of us descended for the last time to live out our days hidden from Hades' tyranny. Mm hmm. Hades, you mean Pluto? Yeah, I mean they are the same, just renamed. Why can't you return to the surface? My generation was wiped out, turned to gold, many years ago. My friends and I were able to avoid the same fate by hiding down here. I think it's safest to assume that if I was to return, Hades would realize that his Furies hadn't finished the job, and he'd send them after me again. Probably, yes. Okay, I'll be going. I enjoyed our chat, but please, keep my presence here a secret, yes? I will. Thank you. Alrighty, so, we got the key. I already know where that door is that he that the key fits in so we will go there in the next episode and I will end this one here you guys thank you so so much for watching please 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 stay safe stay healthy bye bye und auf wiedersehen